Hi, this is Karen from Karen Burke Photography and I'm going to show you how to create the magical book, enchanted book um, photo that I had done earlier and people were asking um, for a tutorial. I couldn't find one so I figured I'll figure out how to make my own. So here's my first try so bear with me. This is straight out of the camera little one. The focus isn't great. She was moving. I had the shutter speed low. Basically what you want to do is um, have your book, put your iPad or whatever you have to illuminate on the pages so it's shining right up at them. Um, keep your ISO as low as possible so that you don't have a lot of noise. Um, this room was not darkened but it wasn't um, didn't have lights on. So um, I duplicated this and then I've got the end product so I can get through this pretty quickly. But what I usually do is I'll go into um, Filter, Camera Raw, and what I want to do is darken this. Um, the selective tool, I'll put my exposure down. Put, you can put the contrast up, you can put the shadows way down so you can get as dark as possible, the clarity doesn't really matter. Um, and you want to darken this. And you don't want to get too close to the chair because then you're going to have to undo it. So, so and if you don't, if you don't, if your picture comes out great and you've got a nice dark background, that's wonderful. Um, but basically you just want to darken as much of it as possible because I'm changing the background. And so then I'll click OK. I would do this more, but f just for the video purposes, we'll click OK. And we'll end up with um, something closer to work with. I'm going to cancel that because and delete this layer because I've already got what I'm going to work with right here. And, uh, huh, OK. Let me just hit these aren't lighting up. I don't know if I cropped them differently or what, but uh, let me just hit uh, Control T and that is it. And then if you hit Shift when you're transforming, it'll keep the sizes proportioned the way they should be. And I'm just going to open this in a new layer because that's not what I want to do. So we're going to go into this picture here and I'm going to open it in Photoshop because that's basically what I want to work with. And there you go. I just wanted to show you how I darken in Adobe Camera Raw. And now what I would do is go into the Quick Select. I've got it on the plus side and just going to take out what I don't want. And if you've got your background darkened enough, it does this every time because it wasn't perfectly dark. Um, I'm not going to go crazy here. I'm just going to give you an idea of how to cut out. Um, okay, now you're going to hit select inverse so then this is what we want to keep and this is what we want to get rid of and you're going to go to refine edge and I usually check this I don't always use this slider but I just check it um, this is your brush size and what you're going to do is just go in here and it's going to clean it up for you This is just a quick, um, you want to make sure that if you don't check this box, make sure you at least check that you want a layer mask because that's the only way that you're going to be able to go in and after you click OK and you're going to be able to go in and fix, see all these areas that it didn't pick up, you're going to be able to zoom in T 
take your brush my palette's a little different than usual make sure it's small enough I think my cap box is on it is if you ever have a crossbar there and you don't have a little circle it's usually because your cap box is on turn it off and you'll have your circle again okay I usually use the solid at first instead of the feathered one because I want to go in here and I want to get back what I didn't get so I want this white because this is what I want to keep and then you just put that 100% and you just paint it back in and sometimes you just have to go in and zoom in and just do it pixel by pixel and right here you don't want this so you turn it around to the black to take out and you remove it now I'm not going to go through this whole thing but basically what you're going to do you're going to inch through and you're going to just make sure you've got everything one thing it likes to do sometimes and you have to really watch for this you see this zigzag area for some reason it bled through and it took all of this out so you gotta watch for those and go in and put it back because you'll 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 finish your your picture you'll go in you'll say what the heck is that and you've already closed it out and it's hard to go back and fix it once you don't have your your layer mask okay so that I've already got this all cut out so we go to the layers and going to close this, going to delete that because I already have the PNG here and when you have your cutout and you want to save it you you save it as a PNG file and so here's my little cutout right here I'll drag it over and pray to God it's the right size <laughs> and check and close that your background now you've got that you can work with it and now we can pull in the brick wall um, if you don't change your background then your work is uh, not going to be as difficult but I didn't like the background it was a fireplace it had all sorts of stuff on it and I had already done the vignette and darkened the background and blurred the background but you really want to make sure when you're putting a background in that if your focus is here you're going to want to blur your background so it looks somewhat realistic. So then we're going to go in and I'm going to start placing some of the little added, let's see, we'll start with um, bubbles. Uh, okay, the curling splash. This is from Layer Cake. Um, it's a bunch of PNGs. You buy these kits and they're really really nice we want to put that up top so we can see it so make sure you can see it and then you just hit um, well, that's pretty much where I had it but when you want it when you drag something in and you want to move it around probably a lot of you know this um, make sure you you click on it and you just hit control T and did I hit control? I didn't. You hit control T and you can move it around. I don't want to do that so we're just going to leave it where it was. Okay so then you go in and I've got the octopus, I've got the harbor seal and they're, they're, I saved them as PNGs so, um, from the photo so they're all going to land where I had them in the picture. Um, the clownfish you just drag if you've got a PNG it's perfect because you don't have to worry about um, cutting them out yourself I have quite a bit of stock that I've cut out myself um, it takes a lot of time and if you can find a PNG and it's reasonably priced I say do it or a lot of a lot of stuff is free too on on uh, DeviantArt, which is nice. So you just drag your elements in, and uh, it's working a lot slower. I don't know why. Just a big 
to just to bug me. Okay, octopus. So he is not okay. Say, so you drag him over here, and uh, what I had done with him is uh, use the puppet warp. So you go to edit puppet warp, and for some reason, usually I'll get these little cross boxes on on the object for puppet work, but for some reason it hasn't been working recently and I don't know why. So you put the pins in where you want the thing not to move and then you take a pin and you just drag it and drag it. I think I got rid of that leg originally and then I took this one over here and put it up towards her hair and then you just hit check and he's good. Now on the clownfish, I put a motion blur on him, and so you click filter, blur, motion blur, and then you'll be able to see what happens. You can adjust the angle of the blur, you can adjust the amount of the blur, like if you put it up there, you're not going to be able to see him. Um, so make it so it looks like he's moving out of the book, but not so that he's so blurry you can't see what he is. And I had also put um, a little motion blur on the seal and what I had done with that is I had um, duplicated him, put a motion blur and then um, you want to just feather it out a little bit. Um, What I had initially done was, darn it, it's moving slowly, um, put the motion blur on his tail fins and then left him pretty sharp. I'm not exactly sure whether that was a great choice or not, but um, just see what works for you. Um, okay, and then we have, let's see, what I did here was um, duplicate, where's that splash? large curling splash. So when you want to duplicate a layer you hit control J and then control T and you want to flip it horizontal and then just put it where you want and the other splash curling splash okay this splash we'll drag that over that's basically going to go exactly where I put it and uh, some of these, some of these, what you're going to want to do is like when I used the giraffe, I had put the giraffes in, and then you just kind of put a a layer mask on them, and uh, that would be you just hit that box if you want to put a layer mask on, and then you would just um, take your your brush and you'd use a soft brush and you'd make the opacity pretty low and then you just um, erase it like a little bit gotta be on the erase mode, black twenty five percent is not showing you enough Oh because I'm on the harbor seal. All right, where's my clownfish? All right, let's try that again. See, I told you I haven't done this before. So then you would just put a little back. So if you wanted it to look like the giraffes did where they were coming out of the book and they weren't perfectly clear and then they got clearer the further they got out of the book, that's how you would do that. Um, Let's see. I think the only other thing would be um, the sparkle overlay that I had used. I didn't use sparkles on this, but um, I have a sparkle overlay that I had used. And then you would just drag it over. Make sure it's on top. Set it to screen and then you just um, you could put a, a layer mask on it 
Remove what you don't like. I always do that. Delete group. I'm going to move that so I can see what I'm doing. Um, layer mask. And then you could, you know, remove what you don't like. Um, you could even put a motion blur on it where you filter, blur, motion blur, and then you could angle whatever angle you want. You could make them. I'm on the layer mask. <laughs> trial and error, trial and error. Okay. And motion blur. And you can see how you could make them move a lot, a little. It's up to you. Okay. And then you just basically you don't want anything over the face. Um, and then when you go in and you when you're done, let's see. I think I put everything in except for the the bubbles. Okay. And then when you're done, um, you could do some dodging and burning. Um, on the background to bring out certain effects. Um, I'll do on the mid-tones. Less is always better when you're dodging and burning. You can always do more. If you do too much it ends up looking muddy or just blown out. Um, it's going to make me do that. Raster, rasterize it so that I can work with that layer. Um, this is where you get you get things to pop and really stand out. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to flatten it so that we can use the greater than Gatsby um, effects with without any problem um, with it getting put in between layers. So we're going to flatten. Okay. This is just a basic. So then we'll go into actions, and I love the emotional color base in the uh, Innocence collection. That's my favorite. I've only had the set for maybe a week and a half, but this seems to be the one that I always go to. And uh, it may lighten up the background, and that can that can just be masked out. Um, and it, it it's a little bright take it down take it down just a little bit and uh, you could go in and you could you could work with uh, shadows you could add um, oh goodness uh, try some freckle juice that's cute um, what I like to do is go in and if I don't I'm not a big fan of the haze um, you go in you just turn off and turn on and see what each one does and uh, if, you, if you like it but you're not if it's too much you just go up and you turn it down or you go into the layer mask if you like it here but you don't like it here then you just use your brush and you take it off I didn't go into as much detail as what I did with the finished product, but I think this will give you a pretty good idea of the process. I hope if you have any questions, feel free to to ask and hopefully my next tutorial will be a little bit clearer and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.